Hi, my name is David, and this video is about the basic geometry that makes a rocking chair rock and what controls its behavior. If you have been in woodworking for a while, you've probably seen any number of wood rocking chairs that have been made by friends, amateurs, professionals, however. Some of them undoubtedly rock very well, some of them less so, and a few of them behave more like a demented funhouse ride. If you are going to design your own or modify an existing design, your odds will be improved if you pay attention to some basic elements of geometry. And that's what I'm going to try to cover in this video. First though, an important message. Before we rock, let's try our little roll. This is a wheel and it rolls well. It does not rock. That is really good for a wheel, not so good for a rocking chair. In order to make it rock, we need to change the center of gravity so that it's below the center of the radius. Here we are back with the wheel. I've moved the center of gravity a little lower by putting some lead on it. It rolls very easily through a fairly large angle. It's basically unstable. It doesn't really want to find home easily. And with just a little bit extra energy, it keeps on rolling. Great for a wheel, again, not good for a rocking chair. Here we are with a lower center of gravity. Now it rocks very clearly. You can identify pretty much where home wants to be on it. And it takes a lot of work to make that want to roll over. Much better for a rocking chair. As we saw, the nature of the rocking is determined by the relationship between the center of the radius and the center of gravity. You lower the center of gravity, it's more stable. You raise the center of gravity, it rocks more freely, but is perhaps unstable. However, when we build a rocking chair, we build it to fit a human. Humans don't change their center of gravity very much, at least not very quickly. Chairs generally have the back of the seat about 16, 15, maybe 14 inches off the ground, the front of the chair three inches higher. You're not going to change the center of gravity of that total mechanism. So what you end up doing is changing the radius. What I have here, three rockers, basically three different radiuses. Let's see how they behave. Here's a rocker with a very large radius. It means the center of that radius is well outside the picture here. When you try to rock it, it goes through a very small angle and it takes a fair amount of energy to make it move very much. Stable but not really a good rocker. Here's a rocker with a more reasonable radius. That looks like something you might actually like. It's stable, rocks well, hopefully you like it. Here's a rocker with a very small radius, which means the radius center and the center of gravity are getting pretty close to each other. It rocks through a larger angle with a lot less effort, and if you give it a little too much, it really rocks and it's very prone to going over. For my rockers, what I have chosen is a radius of 37 inches on the outside of the rocker. You'll notice from the contact point, if I come straight up, the center of that radius is well in front of the back of the chair. That is important. When I went looking at various chairs and saw the ones I liked, saw the ones I didn't like, what was fairly consistent is when I sat in the chair and tried to determine the center of radius, I could find it by putting my fist in front of my chest, and right there, that's where the center of the radius was. Now for your chair, for you, you might choose something slightly different, but I would not change too much from that position. It seems to work fairly well, fairly universally. If you want to play around a little bit, Go get yourself a white, like a white plastic patio chair, something cheap at Home Depot or wherever. Get some plywood, bandsaw, some arcs. Use those as your rockers. Uh, you can play with a 37-inch radius, a 40-inch radius. You can do whatever you want very cheaply, very quickly. You look at angles. It's just a good mini laboratory. It's a good thing to play with. But when you're done playing with that thing, make sure you throw it away. It's probably not a very safe chair for the long run. While we're talking about safety, one important consideration is that as the chair is rocking, 
it gets to a point in the backward rock and stops. It cannot go over backwards. Going forwards, actually that's how you get out of it, by over-rotating it forwards. You do not want to get out by over-rotating backwards. The easiest way to do that is to put a block of wood behind this wheel, and you can see it stops rocking very quickly. In order to get past that, the whole thing, the chair and the person sitting in it, have to be lifted up. That takes a lot of energy. That's where your safety comes from. However, you really don't want to tape a block of wood to the back of your chair. That is why you see so commonly recurve back here. If you continue the radius around, you'll see that this is just the same as that block of wood stopping it from rocking. Another approach is from behind the rocking area, you slowly increase the radius to achieve the same effect. While I mentioned that rocking area, do notice that while the chair rocks, it spends most of the time in a six to eight inch area of the rockers. You go forward to get out of it and into it, but other than that, the chair lives pretty much in a six to eight inch span of the rockers. Back here, you really don't want to spend too much time there. Another element of design that you should consider is the balance, both when it is occupied and when it is empty. It needs to sit at some pleasing level, at least when it's empty, and a comfortable level when you're sitting at it. You'll notice in this case, again, contact point well in front of the person's chest. If you look at some chairs, you will find that while they sit and they look real nice, empty, the contact point is way back. That means when the person sits into it and changes the center of gravity of the whole thing, over it goes, they land on their nose. Not a good idea. So watch where your contact point is with relationship not only to it empty, but imagine the person sitting in it. Also, some people, as they modify an existing design, uh, Sam Wolf's designs are, are very commonly modified. I've seen them where people will move the splats forward a couple of inches, maybe to give better support in the back, or so they think. Unfortunately, that moves the person's weight two inches forward, and again, now it changes the center of gravity when you sit into it, and it wants to rock the person forward. It doesn't change how it looks empty, but when you sit in it, it's not quite as comfortable. Throughout this video, I've worked under the assumption that the rockers are a smooth, even, continuous radius. That doesn't have to be the case. I believe it's a really good idea in that six or eight inch area where the rocker lives when it's rocking. But outside that, you have some flexibility. Just do not go too crazy. If you want the rocker to stop as it goes forward, you just flatten out the radius. If you want it to help throw the person out, you can put a little tighten radius in there. And after all, you're playing that game at the back to keep them from rocking out. So go ahead, you can play a little bit, use that plastic chair with the plywood rockers on it, play with what you want, get a feel for what you like, uh, but do understand if you change it too radically you might not be happy with the results. Here among the background clutter is one of my chairs. You can see that at rest it sets what I find a pleasing attitude. It rocks well, but when I choose to sit in it, it does not do anything crazy. Watch this. It didn't force me to hold myself in, push myself, brace myself. I just sat there, and there I am. My feet are off the ground. It's not taking control. It lets me do what I want with it. it lets me rock comfortably. You'll notice, if you take a look where the contact point is, draw a line straight up. It should be coming up right about here. Seems to work for me. So, here's my chair. It's my style. It may not be yours, but I like it. I hope you like your chair. Happy rocking.